Welcome to another Women Lead webinar series brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Berquist, your host today, as we're delighted to bring yet another informative webinar to our Association of Professional Women. We select topics and themes that support your goal to lead, achieve, and succeed more effectively in business. Our webinars are designed for you as a professional leader in business, whether you're an aspiring woman leader or a woman leading people or projects or teams, or companies. <laughs> Our webinar today is just shy of one hour, and at the half hour mark, we'll be answering any questions that you've submitted during the presentation portion of our webinar. So I'm delighted to introduce our topic today, which is a good one, and I want all of you to know Charlotte Sista C. Farrell, as our topic today is all about putting your best story forward. And let me tell you just a little bit about Charlotte. Charlotte Sista C. Farrell is a multi-talented, multi-hyphenated dynamo who draws upon 25 years of international experience as a health educator, registered dietitian, filmmaker, and writer. She passionately uses her creative art skills to promote healthy lifestyles, support people in recovery, and encourage optimum intergenerational health. Her work introduces people to complementary health concepts such as mindfulness, guided visioning, and health writing. She is frequently invited to bring her energizing poetry performances to churches, conferences, supper clubs, and retreats. She is an award-winning instructor, poet, and filmmaker who's been included in the who's who of entrepreneurs, the Who's Who of Distinguished Alumni, the International Society of Distinguished Poets, oh my goodness, I'm getting tired of all this, Charlotte, <laughs> the International Film Festival of Cinematic Arts, and the list goes on and on. So if you are looking for an authentic, accurate, story-driven, promotional, or educational media to delightfully engage your audiences, clients, or customers, uh, we're going to hear from Charlotte. You can contact her, and she will definitely engage, motivate, and generally wow your audience. So wow, Charlotte, say hello to all of our attendees. And my dear, it is all about you and our topic, Put Your Best Story Forward. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, <laughs> my story, Put Your Best Story story forward is based on my star system. As a speaker, teacher, and author, I tell stories that revitalize people's projects, promote their work, and transform their concepts into engaging scripts, interviews, and videos. Everywhere you go today, people are asking, what's your story? They don't always ask it like that, but at work, the story that you tell if you are always talking about that teenage daughter that doesn't listen to you or talking about problems you're having, then the story they have about you is that you have difficulties at home. In social gatherings, uh, you have another opportunity to tell your story because people ask you, what do you do? What do you like? Why are you here? Networking events, well, CWI has networking events that take people past that uh, hand the card say your name type of thing, to really discussing values, being able to give people an opportunity to tell your story or their story around their values or around um, their points of view or their opinions around certain things. During job interviews, I often have to do interviews when I am um, negotiating a contract or sh showing up for a particular project and people say, what's your story? Tell us about you. And if you haven't thought about that ahead of time, you can find yourself babbling. So crafting your story, getting in line, what you want to say for particular audiences is important. Doing relationship building. <laughs> Sometimes uh, the first date or second date, people can hit each other with so many facts about themselves that the other person fe either feels overwhelmed or they feel like, well, I don't wanna be bothered with a person that's just interested in ships. Uh, and then doing your sec 15 seconds of fame. They said everybody has 15 seconds of fame sometimes, but when somebody puts a mic in front of your face, you want to have a few things in mind that you want to say. Your message does matter. Words paint images, whether it's words that you're saying. For example, you could say, I like violins, or you might say, I collect violins. 
you may not be able to play a lick on a violin, but the gift that you bring to people is you bring children together to play concerts. You find people, children who would love to play a violin, but their families couldn't afford it. So you started a foundation that gets violins for people, but the words paint images beyond just saying, I'm into violins. Think about alignment. If your profession is peace, then you do not want to come out and uh, always be representing using words or descriptions of what you do in warlike environments. But here we have a woman, obviously in the military, but the story that's being projected about her and the story that she might tell others when she talks about what she does, it's her nursing a baby animal. And she's obviously comfortable with children because in this picture you see that the group is uh, maybe children with parents or children with a teacher. Consider the context. You, you might have the most wonderful message in the world, but if you are having that 15 minutes on the stage, 15 seconds when the camera's in front, and you think that the mic is dead, you could say something that is horrendously in contrast with your story, as you will note from the number of people that have had to have a fixer <laughs> come behind them and apologize for uh, sexist, racist, or otherwise unappropriate um, messages that they have put out. What the world needs now is a good story. And everyone has a good story. Stories come through songs. Many of you know Aretha Franklin. Aretha has had periods in her life that have been sad. She's had periods and times that are triumphant. Her music highlights stories. It tells love stories. It tells stories of faith. And when she is interviewed, she's often been able to not stick on uh, the times that she was down, but to talk about and encourage people to do things like helping the other singer, Luther Vandross, after he had a stroke. Uh, stories come through dance. Literally, uh, the other weekend, I was at the Women's Journey Conference, and there were some people who interpreted their story through dance. But you might also reflect your values in talking about da dance or having images of dance if you are dancing through life or dancing into a new chapter. Stories can come through dance through words or through actual pictures. Okay, I need to go back one. Uh, your stumbling blocks may be part of your past, but do you really want them as your headlines? Headlines um, without thinking about your story, if you start off a story talking about um, your abuse, or you start off your story talking about being in jail, and you only have a few seconds to finish it, that's the thing people are going to remember most. However, when the person says, here is lawyer Jane Adams, and she represents clients who um, were um, clients who were disenfranchised or clients who previously had public defenders uh, get them to do uh, trades. <laughs> I mean, get them to do um, just basically uh, plea bargain. But now she is one of the strongest people, strongest advocates for people's rights. And then somewhere down the line, you might get the story that uh, she had been arrested and not given her rights when she was a teenager. But you don't want to put the headlines of all the bad things that have happened to you first. You want to speak and give the impression of where you're going, the vision and image you have of yourself now. The past is important, but it doesn't have to be the headline about your future. I help people identify their passion and to express their purpose so that their stories can soar. Ah, your story is sometimes told in sound bites. Practice answering each of these questions in 15 seconds. Who are you? Who inspired you to do this? What's your mission? What are you passionate about? Why are you doing this kind of business service? When would you be offering your next charitable event, your next luncheon, your next fundraiser? How can people assist you, meet you, or buy your product? Who, what, when, where, and how are the five things, the four W's and H of basic journalism. But it's good to spend some time 
spend some time thinking about those things before you do go to to do an interview or before you put your story out when you are introducing yourself to someone. Because if it's already in your mind, you won't be at a loss for words when somebody says, what's your mission? What are you passionate about? Uh, 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 Deborah Thorne here, you can see her enthusiasm about working with uh, women and also working with helping people understand that fear is the real F word. She uh, talks about what inspired her to do this, but her first thing is the passion that she has for sharing and encouraging women to build their businesses and to overcome their fear. Okay, you want to create some variations on a theme. The first thing and the simplest thing for anyone to do, and one of the simplest things that I've worked with people uh, when I was working in public health, we had a TV show and we had to prepare people that did really complicated environmental things to uh, give 15 second sound bites about their project. So again, you want to write for yourself and for practice reviewing with, uh, now everybody has a phone that you've got a stopwatch on where you can check the time. Uh, who are you? What do you like? The who, what, when, where, and how. From sound bites, you can build a story, uh, an antidote. You notice a lot of times people tell a joke, but you might also have an antidote. There might have been the teacher who, when you were in high school, took you down to a particular college, helped you to understand the courses that you needed to have. And so that's why you are a great scientist now, because that teacher picked up on the fact that there was a school that you didn't know about. And so that's another reason why you are now helping other students to have opportunities to learn about uh, places that offer opportunities to learn the thing that they want to know. You want to have a location reference based on your audience. Whenever you are telling your story to an audience or you're going to show a video or something about to a particular audience, having a location reference. <clears throat> you may have once been to Topeka, Kansas, or you know of a bill that was passed in Topeka, Kansas. Uh, you might have heard something of interest that's happening in that city. It's good to connect in something that's specific to that audience to help engage them uh, to you. How your whys connect. How does your why connect with the why of the people that have come to a particular event? Uh, the other variation is your 15 minutes of fame, your groundbreaking news. Your project was funded. You're going to be able to, uh, there was a, a school that uh, was going to be able to buy bicycles for everyone. So that groundbreaking story, when they interviewed the teacher, she said she saw that so many kids came to school late because they were waiting for their parents to bring them or they hadn't eaten. So she had a story already ready when the camera showed up to talk about the day that all those bikes were delivered. Your specific campaign, um, the who, what, when, where, and why, will help you to have the key facts about your campaign so that you don't, uh, uh, the moment that your breaking news is happening, you don't forget to say where it's going to be. You might have already written out um, the location, the, the email address, the website to contact so that people know how to help, help uh, how to get in touch with you. Uh, overarching va values or overarching, depending on the part of the country you're from. <laughs> uh, how do your values connect with the audience? If you are using your story for branding yourself and it's a story that's going to be a documentary, what are your values and how are those values going to connect with the intended audience? Is your story going to be shown on a sporting program? Is it going on to a women's business program? Is it going to something in the schools for children? What are the values of the place that your story is going to be seen or heard and how do they align with your values? Um, we said again, the location perspective, having a call to action. What do you want people to do after they see your story? Do you want them to call you up? Do you want them to send you $100? Do, they, do you want them to pre-register for your event? Do you want them, how do you want them to feel about you? And then always remind people how to contact you.
from sound bites to stories, you need to be seen on the screen. Everybody says, are you going to be on a screen? Well, from your cell phone, some people might be listening from a cell phone. If you are having a story made, such as a personal documentary or something that's uh, intended to be shared on a phone, then there is a way of formatting it so that it looks proper and people can actually read it comfortably or see it and hear it properly on the smallest cell phone. Uh, there's another modification or adjustment that's made if something is going to be seen on a web screen. Um, there are many template programs that people get sometimes and sometimes those templates do not uh, allow the material that has been designed, a video that's been designed to play on your uh, website, if that hasn't been aligned properly or designed properly, sometimes it doesn't work with the templates. You have to work with someone, uh, a web designer, who can set your story, set your video to play properly with that particular uh, type of screen. Uh, sometimes your story is going to be seen on a movie screen. So thinking about what you want to tell on a movie screen, sometimes people ask me or a team about things, but they're not really things that um, show well if you're going from the size screen that you find in a church and the size screen that you would find at your AMC theater. So planning, being able to talk and plan and think about what else is necessary? You can't take everything that you shoot on uh, a telephone <laughs> and project it to every type of screen. You really have to look at the capacity of the camera. If you have a camera and you are shooting your own uh, material on a camera, then one of the things that you would want to do is um, go to the store, the Microsoft store and the um, Mac store, <laughs> both of them have classes. They have classes on how to use all the features that are in your phone in order to shoot your own story. If I'm working with someone, I help people to bring their screen through talking about and looking at the best images and how they connect to the point that you want the story, uh, preparing them if they're going to be interviewed by someone else, uh, stories that come to the screen through an event um, or through documentaries. Each of those things are things that I love individually working with people on and helping to represent <laughs> them on the screen. The story about your company, your products, your events need to be screened. I'd love to help you map out a plan. This is a map. <laughs> this, this picture is actually from a, a documentary that I had the honor of being able to do with uh, Deborah Thorne's group for uh, These Women Mean Business. We, we took a cruise to six port cities in the Caribbean. And um, I'm sorry, we went to four port cities, but we had daily activities, six days of activities on board the ship. But in the Bahamas, we uh, were sitting and talking about the archipelago and how that particular country welcomes people to come and shoot their stories uh, among the beautiful things that are found on the island and how easy it is to work with them. So there are all kinds of places from uh, stories that you see on your laptop, stories that you might see in a webinar, stories that you might tell about your travels, all types of ways and opportunities to put your story on a screen. So uh, you can contact me at 310-562-6889. You can learn more about my work at www.charlotteferrell.com. And you can ask me questions that you have today. Well, nice job, Charlotte. That was pretty good. I know we probably have some questions here. I'm looking up our questions from our attendees, and it looks like we do. So I got two that are kind of similar. Um, a couple of people are saying, you know, how do you put your story together um, and how to develop their story? Can you kind of refresh some one, two, threes or, you know, kind of like ABCs on that for developing our, our story? Yes, I think, it's, again, starting with, with sound bites and those five, four Ws and an H, who are you? What is your story? Is your story 
uh, again, are we talking about a story about your business? Are we talking about a story about what you do? Why are you doing it? Uh, where do you have something coming up or a place of where, a location that's significant? And then getting just really familiar with those things about yourself and then the purpose, because what's the purpose of the story? So when I'm working with someone to help them craft their story, we look at uh, how is the story going to be used? You know, is this a story that you want to, you want to have a basic story that includes those five elements that you can, you can say when someone says, who are you and what do you do? Or, right. Well, you know, it's interesting. So, I mean, here's kind of like my take, because that, those were the questions, you know, but um, that, that somebody asked initially, but, you know, when you're developing your story, do you need like a different story for any different purpose? Like whether it's video or that kind of thing, do you need different stories? Well, I think it's first when I said uh, on the slide that I said uh, variations on a theme, when you get the first clarity about what is it you're doing? For example, um, the thinking of stories that I heard over the day of the women's journey, there was a, a an athlete, woman who was born without legs, but her story wasn't about being born without legs. Her story was about being a competitive gymnast and really wanting to encourage kids, not just kids who were handicapped, but her passion is helping kids to know that no matter what, um, they can achieve it. So really, around your business, around your purpose, it's good to first write out those things for yourself and then practice it. Because if you have those 15 seconds when you can express that, then you can think of how do you vary it? If you're going to speak to um, a women's group, there's a little bit of difference in how you will tell that story. If you're going to talk to an audience that's pr primarily um, male police captains, What's the connecting point? Uh, being able to say, if you know what your purpose is and what your values are, then it's easy to think about that audience. How do your values connect with their values? But it's clarifying those five things for yourself so that then you can vary your story according to where you're going to tell it. And then for video, when I see those things, I know, you know what's the person passionate about? What do they want to do? Do they want to promote themselves or are they trying to promote an event? It makes a difference then on if we're doing a three minute video that's going to overall promote themselves or promote the organization, or if we're doing something about something that's happening on October 28th. But the fundamental things of being able to really get clear of what you want to say or want people to know about who you are, what your business is, um, how they could how they could be involved? How does it connect with them? Um, Keith Ferrazzi, um, who uh, wrote a wonderful book called "Who's Got Your Back," and he did an activity that I thought was scary. He had 500 people, and he told the people that they were to go and find three people, and and that three people expressed to them their number one goal for the next week. And what he says is when you are really clear about your goal or clear about your value, it resonates with the person so that people start thinking about um, who can I tell about this? If it's not something they can use, who can they tell about it? But if you haven't really thought about what's your goal, what's your purpose, what you're passionate, when these opportunities come up, you're at a loss for words. Um, when it comes to then just whether it's crafting a script, a crafting a video, it's much easier for someone who does those things to work with you if you've clarified that for yourself. Well, and do you, you know, and I, I know I think, at least for me, if I can say this, you know, for any of our attendees, it's like, I think, you know, sometimes I, I think the story evolves, right? So it changes. Do you agree that it changes over time? I mean, you know, sometimes I'll say, my story one way about our past and our association or who I am. And, you know, it, it kind of ebbs and flows. Do you find it, it should be the same every time or that it just depends on how long you have and maybe the other kind of items you, you throw in there? Well, your story, well, let's say you, you vary it, the variations on the theme. So you have a basic theme about who you are and what CWI is. And so 
when you talk about women lead, women lead, you you believe in have a high value for presenting different ways of of how women can lead. Your organization is about women in leadership, but there's variations then in how you present it. But some things are constant. Your, you know, your logo is constant. Your uh, image is constant. So, but it's just initially getting that first story down. So, uh, and that does change over time because sometimes, you know, I've had to do a, a total change in my story because I've shifted uh, the fundamental right. that I was doing to something else. Uh, you know, and I get that. And I think it does evolve. And, you know, and then you get better at it and it gets more polished. But here's a question from somebody is, can you give an example of a good sound bite? You know, I mean, I know we're putting you on the spot on that one, but, you know, I'm not, I know sound bites are quick and fast. Maybe, you know, kind of like, can you give an example of a good sound bite? Um, and can you tell me? Um... It's all they gave me in the question. I, I think, you know, I'm going to kind of guess what they're alluding to is I know you said there were sound bites as one of your, you know, um, strategies to use as good sound bites of who, what, when, where, why, if I recall, but yeah. I'm not sure. And let's see if they put something else as maybe more specific. Cause here's a different question is they said, can you go through um, the kind of sound bites versus audience specific versus 15 minutes of fame? Um, not sure about when to use which one. Okay. Well, a sound bite is, and the reason I said 15 seconds, they used to say have a 30 second elevator speech, but, um, mm -hmm. I was listening to some research that Pacifica Radio was presenting, and they said people stop listening, really stop listening after four seconds, and by eight seconds, if you haven't really caught them, uh, moved them, they've gone on, they, their mind is wandering. So um, 15 seconds, being able to say, um, uh, there's this little girl who, who's thinking, I love working with children who have dreams about what they want to do and help them express it through uh, films and poems. Right. So that's less than 15 seconds. Um, Deborah Thorne has one that's kind of in, etched in my mind because she always says it and she varies it for the audience, but she says, you know, I am CEO, not uh, CEO, I help women do business like a, a woman rather than a man. I help people build uh, <laughs> six-figure incomes. <laughs> so, right. Uh, and it's a soundbite and she does get to say, she says those three things about what her business is, the CEO, not CEO, that she, uh, uh, that she helps women build six-figure incomes and that uh, she helps women do business like a woman, not a man. Those are all sound bites that then she goes on if there's more time. But if, uh, if you have that clarity, when you have an opportunity to introduce yourself somewhere, uh, it also generates then questions. Uh, but you want to... So it's almost them. like you're... Is it almost like your introduction? It's just got to be, it's got to be like a sound bite. Who are you? What do you do? How do you do it? And why, 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 right? I mean, it, it kind of like encompasses everything into it. I mean, Deborah's is a perfect example, right. you know, but is this something that you help people craft is their story or you take their story and put it on video? Um, well, well, this is my question because I want well, our audience yeah. to know what you do. Yeah, the two things, I help them to craft it because uh, through continually asking questions and pressing around the who, what, when, where, uh, why, and how, we get to uh, how is the sound bite going to be used? What, is this, what does it look like if it's something that you're standing up and saying, but how can it also look in images? Uh, I've done slide, you know, like slideshows. Sometimes people just have a slideshow and the slideshow tells their story. Um, someone working with him, like my son is a webmaster, web designer, and he has a series of slides that he uses across my uh, banner that tells a little bit of my story. But the, the pictures, to just have a collage of pictures, sometimes people have just a set of pictures, but if they don't tell a story, um, it's just a nice set of pictures. So I help people by pressing around who are you? What are you passionate about? 
What do you love to do? Because those things are elements of being able to tell the story either around an event or to tell a story and promote your business. Uh, the when becomes important if there's something that's timely. But when also relates to how long have you been doing this? Sometimes people ask, but you don't really think about well, how long I've been doing this 20 years. Uh, you might have just changed. Uh, we started this in 2010. Uh, so yes, I help people craft their story according to the simplest thing, those sound bites that they can give when they are asked questions um, in social, professional, or business um, right. events. But then beyond that, if we are going to be telling a business a documentary. I have a, a client that who who is a hairstylist, and she's a naptician. So in uh, three minutes, we have a story that where she actually helps people to, to see what a naptician is and see some uh, excerpts of her work. But it kind of gives you a picture of her story as uh, not, not, not just a hairstylist, but an aptician, and you understand how she's passionate about it. But I think definitely having a consultation helps people to uh, then look at what's the, what's the best medium for the message. Is it uh, a video? Is it uh, a painting? You know, different ways that this story could be told. Love it. You know, do you, I mean, in your, from your experience, you know, what do you see, I guess, the clients that you work with the most, what do they struggle with the most when it comes to crafting their story? Is it the visual aspect? Is it the words? Is it the fact they need to put a video together? What do you see people struggle with the most that, you know, for at least for our audience, it's professional women, but what would be your thoughts on, you know, how they the top things they struggle with and your suggestions on how they can overcome that. Uh, one of the top things is people uh, picturing what other people have done rather than picturing what is it that they want to tell, who is it going to be shown to, what do they want to have happen with it? Because they get overwhelmed with the idea of, oh, I'm making a video and they're thinking they're making uh, Gone with the Wind or uh, <laughs> Batman meets Superman. That's funny. <laughs> but uh, huh. really just getting a picture of, um, and, and they worry about the cost, you know, so that they're so busy worrying about these other things on what is the story? What's the opportunity first? Is the opportunity that somebody said you're going to be introduced? A lot of programs now, when they, um, I went to two different conferences and they introduced the person with a short video about the person. And that video showed something of, you know, that some element of their work, some element of um, the accolades they've gotten, the awards that they've gotten, and then whether there was a call to action. It kind of showed in a minute before they were going to hear the person speak. It gave a pitch for why you should, why we've brought this person here to speak to you or dance for you or whatever today. So that might be, again, looking at what are the opportunities for this video or visual representation and then talking about uh, uh, both the budget but also the time because uh, there's a difference if you can tell a story in an office in one location or if you have to tell a story by going to three cities and two countries. Right. Right. Well, yeah, that's those are location news. I mean, what I love that, if I can share, is what I love with some of the questions you've asked me and our association, because we're doing some videos with you, is, I mean, you got right to the heart of it. You know, the, the big thing for me that was the aha is kind of like what are we hoping people will feel after watching it or what do you want them to do? And I was like, well, that was a powerful question, right? Of kind of like understanding what's kind of like beginning with the end in mind. And that kind of helped me back into at least some of the pieces and elements that we wanted to see with our video, knowing that I think we've got a long, <laughs> we have a long story, right? We have so many years behind us, but anyway, good stuff. I got a couple more questions for you. You know, um, and these are from different listeners. It's like if somebody's not a great speaker, it's like how do they how do they tell their story? You know, I mean, so many women, Charlotte, are uncomfortable in front of a camera. It's like maybe they're not great writers. How how can somebody find out 
or what would be your suggestions and how they could craft their best story thinking they might not be a good speaker, but they might be great in front of a video or they might not be great or comfortable in front of a video, but they're a good writer, you know, all those different places. How do you find out what's best for you as a storyteller, so to speak? Okay. Well, again, with talking with the person and if somebody says, I, I hate my voice or I feel very nervous about talking, uh, we can look at doing a voiceover. We could show what they do. They might make, mm. do a wonderful job of showing um, intricate artwork that they do or have people, well, like stylish. She does intricate, you know, braiding designs, being able to show it, let the work show it, and then have either graphics or voiceover that tells the, 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 uh, the story so that that person does not have to talk. Uh, another could be using metaphors. There are also metaphors for feelings. So just being able to have some things, if a person doesn't have a whole lot of footage about uh, their, their, their product or themselves, there can be metaphors around the feelings that the audience will have when they uh, use this person's business service or product. You understand what I mean? That's pretty good. Images, images. Yeah, those are great things. And, you know, I mean, it's funny. Here's another question that came in, and they said, you know, I'm, I've am i been interviewed before, and I struggle. I'm using just exactly their words here. I struggle with the quick answers to questions that I'm not um, ready for. Any suggestions on how to be more quick with my <laughs> responses? <laughs> I'm glad you asked that. And that's a great I, question. I mean, because I, I get that too. You're like, oh my God, you know, what if somebody comes with a wackadoodle question, and you're telling your story and you got the story, but then they're throwing you off your game, you know? How do you handle that? Well, I have two ways. One, I've just written a special thing for CWI, which is 10 tips, uh, the ahas of uh, being interviewed. But the, the point that I keep making um, is writing out these things for yourself and actually sitting in front of a mirror and timing yourself for 15 seconds of saying what you want to say about yourself. And it's okay sometimes to even redirect uh, people. I've watched uh, people answer questions on Jeopardy and on late night TV. And sometimes they'll say, what was your worst case what was your worst situation? You don't really want to tell them your worst situation, but if you haven't thought about that question before, you can think of, a, of how you overcame a, 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 an embarrassing or challenging situation and you tell them that story. And then part of them can be also redirecting a person. You can, it's all right to redirect a person and say, but we agreed to talk about this today um, and go back to, saying what you wanted to say. But you it's good to actually spend that time practicing 15 seconds of saying what you want to say about your product. Um, I love that. I love it. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll share one thing that worked for us. And, you know, again, we've tweaked it over the years. But, you know, because we're an association for women, you know, many moons ago, I'm going to put it in that vernacular, which is many years ago, you know, I was stumbling over being able to describe who are we, what do we do, and, and why do we matter, right? Why do we matter in the world, at least from our perspective? You know, do you have any thoughts on going out to, let's say you're an author or a speaker or you're a small business owner, does it, is it only your words that matter? Or what do you think about somebody going out and asking their client? you know, a little bit about the right words to use in their story. Does that make any difference? Or do you recommend that somebody would do that, Charlotte? Oh, yes, in preparing. In fact, there's a great book that's called Feedback Marketing. And in that, he talks about the importance of taking some people, you know, even four or eight people that are your, your customers and asking them, what do they like about what you do? Is there anything that um, you might have done better? But particularly asking them about the words that they would use to describe what you do. Uh, so yes, it's just, the, here's this book. Uh, it's called Feedback Marketing, How to Duplicate Clients, Attract Prospects, and Create 
Advocates Without Talking. And it's by Dan. Wow. Austin. <laughs> and he gives a lot. He says, you know, that one of the best things to do is to do um, three questions. Ask people, did you find anything valuable about my offer? How could I improve it? How could I truly bring more value to you through, oh, sorry. How could I truly bring more value to you through my experience and skill, my expertise in these areas? And I said, by asking people, uh, that helps you get your story too, because um, sometimes people really don't understand what people like about what you do. Mm hmm no, I totally agree. I mean, in fact, and I'm going to ask you for maybe just a couple of things to leave us with, because I know, you know, one thing we ended up doing in our association is I, um, years ago, this was, again, many moons, I, I put together what I call the messaging document, and it was just a word document, and I started, you know, answering those questions. Who are we? What do we do? Why do we do it? Why do we matter? Why should anybody care? You know, and it was awesome, because over the years, it's changed, right, a little bit. I mean, the core focus and mission of what we do is the same, but it's really helped me over the years when I've had some of our members come back and say, here's why I think CWI matters. I've updated our messaging because it does change over time. I mean, I don't know if you like that idea or not, but it's been very, you know, very helpful for us, you know, because it's, it's not always the same and your, your business evolves and changes just like you and your story evolves. So what are your thoughts on that? I just want to know, am I on the right track with that? Cause it's worked yes. really well for us. <laughs> yes. It, it yes. Does. I got a yes. thumbs up. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but, and I love it. The thing that I showed at the beginning actually came through working with uh, Inner Circle Group, you know, within Inner City Slickers. I mean, that, you know, I belong to a group called Inner City Slickers, and so Connected Women of Influence, it's too many inside inner things. But There's inner, a lot of inner stuff, you know? yeah, that's funny. <laughs> but, I love uh, it. Well, you know... The Inner Circle was what I was trying to say, the CWI Inner Circle. Well, that's awesome. That, that's well. awesome that came from that, so that, that's another whole <laughs> subject for us on a different day, but... But yes, I mean, even with the feedback you get, that can help take your business to, to, to new levels based on what people give you feedback on about your story and your messaging. So this was awesome. I mean, last kind of question from me, you know, do you have anything like a final thoughts you'd like to share with our attendees about, you know, what would be a couple of, of course, contact you and we'll have the information and link um, to your site that'll be in the description of the webinar. How... Um, Charlotte, would be something that you would just say to our attendees as a final, leave us with something inspirational or practical or a couple of, you know, here's your first and second steps, but leave us with something powerful. There's no pressure on you or anything, is there? No, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Inspire us, Charlotte. What I'm going to say is you do have a story. The thing is you have lots of stories and your message matters. So what you really want to think about in times like this, in the business environment and the world climate, what one story about who you are and what you do is the one you want to bring forward. And then do spend those 15 with it, you're not going to spend 15 seconds writing it, but spend a bit of time writing those things out for yourself. And then after you're comfortable saying it, say it to other people and see if your uh, portrayal, your story, um, is, and how you see your story is the same way they see your story. I love that. That was very inspirational. Well done, Charlotte. Thank you for being our thought leader today. You were awesome. I know we're going to have you back for more. And to all of our attendees, thank you for joining us because we're going to be back again in two weeks with our next Women Lead webinar so you can lead, achieve, and succeed as a female leader in business. Thank you so much for joining us.